a lot of things you just said, I really, uh, like, got turned on by. Like, addicted to ketamine. Fucking love ketamine. I can't <laughs> yeah. have it. I can't have it Neither. anymore either. But God, Bummer, that, too, isn't it? It didn't P- bring out the best. Ticket. Yeah, I, I I wasn't very cool on it, <laughs> but I fucking thought I was. <laughs> but I felt cool. <laughs> yeah, that's. But so that's one of the that's one of the weird things about ketamine is it gives you this bizarre, like narcissism. Like it may it really like fucks with your like ability to. to oh, to, dude! It, to, it it what it is is uh like pharmaceutical PCP. It, it falls oh, in the, really? the class of drug known as dissociative. Yeah, and uh, PCP is a, a much like dirtier street version, but they they have a lot in common. And, Hold on, uh, writing down. Need to try PCP. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I, I did. I was about equally uh, uh, out there on both. I, I, I'm curious yeah. about it. Like, what what's it like? What's what are your guys' like worst K experiences or like best? But when you're in a K-hole, how long does it last? What are you thinking? Are you thinking you're gonna die? Are you tripping or are you loving it? I think that the that the, the the general big picture answer is that it that it's a real moving target, man. It it's like uh, mm. various experiences like are various. You know, I mean, like I, I can but but you first, man. And, and I'll take it away. Uh, let's not go for best or worst experience, but just notable. Um, well, you know what? I'm going to look it up real quick and see if I can find it. The guy who invented float tanks was really into ketamine. And he actually created a, a yeah, here it is. It's so funny he did this. But he created a dosage chart uh, <laughs> where he actually mapped the experiences out based on milligram dosages. If you look it up, just John Lilly ketamine chart. So he's got here. Now, I don't know because I was like insulting. I have no idea like what the what the injection what this means compared to like snorting it but at 30 milligrams you've got something he's calling internal reality 75 milligrams which he which he calls i 75 milligrams they extraterrestrial reality Mm -hmm. 150 milligrams we the network of creation and then 300 milligrams Unknown. Oh, wow, dude. Can you overdose on ketamine? Oh my god, I'm so excited to talk to you, Duncan. I mean, honestly, cool I, like, I, I'm so excited on so many levels, and um, like, like, like what, what you just described there really, I think, reinforces my personal experiential theory that yeah. there is something absolutely spiritual in in drugs, and and particularly even in ketamine. But, oh God, ketamine is like um, one of my friends who writes all these books on the occult calls it occult cocaine. It's a, it's such a occult substance. It's a, you know, something about the disassociative effect. Uh, it opens up. A, I mean, you can call it whatever you want, but I think it's a. I think it. I think you you go into alternate universes. And- sure. He, he, here's what I think: is that that like we are sort of relegated to this physical reality or sorry physical illusion in this third dimensional sort of compartment and yeah. i believe that when we ingest you know certain chemicals and, and a variety of chemicals that what we do is we essentially erode the barriers in between said apartments and kind of open yeah. ourselves up to entities from other dimensions totally. and it's, it's a dangerous thing to do with drugs because with with drugs what, like when you th- those those barriers that we are eroding are essentially protective in a number of ways and by eroding the barriers we open ourselves up to sort of uh all you know all things you know other dimensional and that comes with a lot of like very low frequency and low frequency Absolutely. i would categorize as de- demonic you know like demons and high sure. frequency being like sort of angels so when I was, you know, at the end of my run with drugs and alcohol, I was like fucking routinely, and I was so excited about it because I felt privy to what was going on, like in other dimensions with spiritual beings. So I just couldn't keep piling in enough drugs to <laughs> yeah. keep it happening. Like the 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 hallucinations that I was having, both visual, like hearing the voices, you know. Uh, uh, audio uh like tactile where you actually feel it you know yeah. and and i had i categorized all of the experiences with these beings as demons and angels and then the third category 
which I now think of as demons, trickster spirits, where they, they yeah. were just straight trying to fucking entertain me, and boy, did they. Because, yeah. like, <laughs> I was, like, sitting in a chair. I remember I was, like, snorting cocaine. I was inhaling nitrous oxide. I had all pills, weed, everything, and I just thought to wow. myself, as I went to go do this line of cocaine, I just thought, there's no longevity in this. Like, I'm straight killing myself right now. Yeah. And then I had the thought, Fuck it, I don't care. Like, I don't care if I die. I had that thought. I don't care if I die. I lean over to do this line of cocaine, and the swiveling office ch chair that I was in, as I leaned over, it physically spun around like a big, strong dude grabbed yeah. it and spun, like, with the force of like a mechanical bull. <laughs> and now I know intellectually for a fact that I did not actually spin. If there was a surveillance sure. camera in my apartment, nothing would have happened. But I'm telling you, I had that experience, a very tactile experience. And there was another time sitting in that same exact chair, the whole fucking chair just straight erupted into flames. And I and like yeah. every time I had one of these experiences, I'm like, okay, this is fucking cool. You know, this is going on. Let me double check. Is it yeah, I just check, I just double checked and it's still going on. The flames all engulfing me. It's not hot, I'm perfectly comfortable, but it's just yeah. really fucking cool that I happen to be in a chair engulfed in flames. Like I had this skateboard uh, screwed to the wall uh, so it was, um, you know, vertical, right? And I, and I had a globe ma uh, screwed to the skateboard. So the globe was protruding over the doorway to the apartment, you know, like uh, horizontally. And I, I, like, like the fucking liquid Terminator, I watched that globe, like my own face, like pushed through it, you know, like, like it was the liquid Terminator. Yeah, you could see my face pushed through it. And then fucking, it just started fucking headbanging. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. And I'm like, fucking right on you know <laughs> like yeah. I, had, I had these curtains that would just on their own open and close and open and close yeah. where, where that wasn't possible there were lights that were never fucking there that was just flashing like it just turned into a fucking rave all this stuff was going on and 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 i was like this is the coolest fucking thing i just have to keep doing more and more drugs yeah. Can I just tell you how fucked up my new tour is? It's completely multimedia, legitimately X-rated. There's legal waivers all over the venue because I'm actually worried about getting sued. And I don't give a fuck, man, because it's gnarly and it's all the stuff I wasn't allowed to do on Jackass. So get to my fucking website, stevo.com, and get your tickets, man. Especially with this movie coming out, dude. They're all going to sell, dude, so hurry up while you can get seats. Yee-hoo!